All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, I'm back home, I'm in the studio, got a big Belgian linen, and the idea of what I'm gonna do now is, I've just got back from a plein air painting trip, as you know, if you watched the last videos. One of the smaller ones, a real little fleeting moment, a real little gem, which I really like, I've got over here, I'll grab. Here we go, this little piece here, now the idea is it's a very broad, colourful, fleeting moment done in the evening light. The idea here is, with that particular piece, I'm only going to use that as reference. And because it's been simplified, because it is a fairly small piece and I was using big palette knives, it's already very simplified. So what I'm going to do is continue with that concept, build it up onto a large scale, not using any photos for detail, just staying with that smaller piece and enlarge it and make a big simplified block version of it, kind of a modern abstraction of plein air painting. All right, so I might do a bit of taping and all sorts of things, should be a bit of fun. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so what I've done is I've just got some tape and I've taped the edges. I just wanna play with a little bit of that uh, tape and raw linen and all that sort of stuff. So the idea is I'll peel that tape off later on and uh, this is gonna give me an interesting effect too. Okay, let's go, right. Now, the biggest difference is I might establish the darks first. Okay, so what I've done is I've just taped off a bit. I'm gonna tape around the edges. Got a bit of tape on the bottom. I've just put a temporary horizon line and I've measured that so it's straight. That way when the painting's finished, there's not gonna be any weird angles. I can actually take that one off now. Now, I've just put a few blue lines. That's just to compose the picture. All right, let's get started. We'll get this one off first. So that's left nice even horizon and that is one of the most important things for a landscape painting particularly of Outback Australia or anywhere where there's a big flat open area looking out to sea anything like that you need to have straight horizon <coughs> here we go look at that yep she's cute <laughs> okay thought I'd double check I stood back I thought I'd double check that one. I stood back and it didn't look straight to me. I thought, well, better measure it up. Okay, here we go. What are we going to do? All right. We'll start with, I'll put in some dark. So I might go for, obviously I'm going to be painting with this big palette knife again. Really love this one. Great. Tons of oil paint. Right, let's get into it. Okay. Alizarin crimson, a bit of burnt sienna. Now if I throw a little bit of Viridian Green in that, it's the opposite side of the colour wheel of the Elizabeth Crimson, it'll go real dark, and that's what she's gone and done, so that's good. Right, so I'll establish where I want these darks. A little bit in here. We don't need too many darks. Uh, just a couple to set the stage for the tonal scale, so... Imagine black to white, by putting some real darks, you've got a lot to work with. If it's just worked down one end with mainly lights, well, you haven't got as big a tonal range. So just a few darks like that, even if you're not gonna have a dark painting, just helps it to pop a little bit. So let's go with that. Right, now I'll lighten up, so I'll go, ooh, let me see now. Yeah, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, that's the beauty of that painting over there. It's given me the idea of the simplified block versions of the colours that I want to use. Okay. That's a nice, rich, outback road colour. I'm liking that. Now, it'll be interesting watching this taping, how it goes. I'm just going by feel with it. It's all a bit of fun. Okay, now, as I get closer, this is a nice and in the shadow on the side of the road there. As I get closer to the edge, I'll cool the shadow off a bit with a little bit of ultramarine blue. A bit of white to lighten that off. A bit of magenta also. So it's a much lighter tone. A bit more magenta with that. you just got to feel it as you go. Right, so... I'll just stick this in here, half mix it with the original stuff, so you've still got the feeling of it, of both of them together. A little bit along the top there. Okay, a 
bit of warm and cool jumping around in. So, right, might go for even cold. A little bit of phthalo blue, which is more of a green blue. It's an extremely strong colour. Half mix that with a bit of that action. Where's that going to go? So I really want to play with colour and simplification of the extreme light that you can get in the outback, which is great fun to play with. So I'm sticking some cold, cold tones in first. Just feeling my way here. Okay, it's kind of fun just uh, not working with photographic reference, just working alone with a simplified plein air piece. Because obviously this is a lot bigger than the original plein air painting. And I'm just lightening off a bit with some blues and whites. Just go a little bit darker than that. We got a bit carried away with that white. So I'm doing a combination of the ultramarine blue and the phthalo to give a fairly neutral blue because the ultramarine is a red blue, the phthalo is more of a green blue. Put them both together you get a pretty neutral sort of blue. Alright, we've got that. Now, a few more darks, burnt siennas, yellow ochres. Ready and green, I just want to knock in a little bit dark here. Go for more of that yellow ochre. Ready and green, just knocking up some shadow colours with this tree. There's a tree in the sunset light here, and what we've got is it's a road, our back road running through, and there's a dry creek crossing. So we're going through the dip and then out the other side. Right. A bit more cool colours over here. What are we doing? We're jumping up just above the horizon line. Throw a few of those cool colours around. Here and there. These are the shadowy undertones. And uh, what happens is after that, you can put the light source on top, but I'm just painting the cooler darker tones first. This is the hero here, this is the main tree. Put that in nicely. Okay, I'll just stand back and analyse that composition. Take this to the bin while I'm at it. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted, all right. I'll stick that back over there wipe this clean. Now I reckon the next biggest difference will be, let's get, let's get the sky in. Okay, now I'll work down at the horizon level first. So, I'll be using some burnt sienna today down low with white. So that burnt sienna is a great colour for skies. You can use it in the blues of the sky or in the clouds. It's, I really enjoy using burnt sienna as, as a good sky colour. And in the evening effect like that, down near the horizon, the horizon it uh, kind of gets that rich burnt sienna effect down low. So just knock up a bit of a brew of that with white. Let's have a look. That's a nice deep tone. It's good. It's going on all right. It's kind of, I really enjoy working with the Belgian linen with it, like that clear Belgian linen, you know what I'm saying? Like not white primed. Belgian linen, when it's got a clear primer like that, has a beautiful earthy, just drop a little bit in there. It has a beautiful earthy quality about it, which really seems to suit particularly what I'm doing, which is painting the outback. But I find it good for a lot of subjects. All right, so there's a bit of burnt sienna. I like that cleaner. Yellow ochre is another colour I love using in these sunset skies. When I say sunset, I don't mean I'm looking into the light sunset. I'm looking 
across the light in this particular instance the sun's over here going that way but you're still getting those you know sunset colors so that's yellow ochre and white let's have a look what we got yeah, that's pretty good pop that in so they're all sitting next to each other at the moment rather than blending them we just put them all in Try not to touch those darks too much because they're so different to these light tones. It'll make a bit of a smudgy mess at the moment. So I'll blend them later. But for now, we'll just steer a little clear of them. So that's getting a lot of warm tones in the sky. introduce a bit more of that brown across here all right before I go any further I might oh yeah what I'll do is I'll go to the next phase the next layer so I need some blues I'll use a bit of those blues but I'll add white the blue some earlier add a bit of phthalo again so it's got a slight green to it I'll even drag some of that yellow ochre into it makes it a real green color and you, you say green what the heck but Quite often in these skies, in the evening, down lower, you get these greens with the ochres there, beautiful combos. Let's see what we've got here. It needs to be lighter though, it needs more white in it. So I'm whitening with plenty of white, getting plenty of paint. <laughs> a bit more yellow ochre. Just getting a nice little brew. I love painting out in the bush but I really love painting in the studio too because it reminds me of being out in the bush <laughs> so I guess it's all related to being out in the bush in the long run I used to feel like I'm back there which is always a good thing okay so that's going a bit higher nice Right, bin run. Now the sky up high is going to be a bit warmer, so it's got a bit more reds and less of those ochres and stuff. So I'm using the ultramarine blue, which is the red blue. And a bit of these other blues that I mixed earlier, there's some warm blues there. Got a bit of magenta with it. quite a difference but I'll blend them all in so it shouldn't be too much of a problem just get it all on first and then we'll work it out like I've said before just paint for the big impression first getting the major colors major tones and then later on you can start to get a bit more of the drawing happening and getting things more accurate A blue somewhere in the middle here. Middle tone. Let's get those together a little. Okay, so we've got plenty on the gear, plenty of paint on the go at the moment. What I'll do is wipe the knife clean. And I'm just gonna bring some of these colours together now so they're not staring at each other and uh, just with little marks helps to bring all these colours together. 
work my way up now I'll blend that green into those ochres getting those lovely blends of those evening sunset colors now getting there getting there okay go up another layer Okay. Now I'll start blending that darker redder blue. Bring them all in together like so. At first I'm just doing a bit of a blend like this, and then what I'll do is start to vary the marks a bit once you get a bit of a blend going. Just do a quick bin run. Look up the top. First I'm just getting the blend going and then I'll vary the mark so it's not too monotonous and similar. It's all good to, I want it to be varied brush marks, not exactly the same, or, or not brush marks, but palette knife marks. Same with if it was a brush. Just make it so there's more variety. So you've got short marks, long marks, marks that are not blended much, other bits that are blended a lot. Just vary it. So I'm lifting the palette knife and up and down here to marry the two colours together, kind of chopping it in. And then I might, once I'm happy with that, I might blend and pull up even, which really softens. Starting to soften and blend now. Feeling like that sky has got that evening glow about it. That, of course, we love. Very romantic time of day. When the world is all lovely and having a rest it rolls into the evening light. Now, a little bit of magenta. Blue, I'm going to have to lighten that a lot. Let's have a look. Just going to throw, yeah, it's going to be a lot lighter than that. A lot of white in the mix. Just going to throw a little bit of magenta near the horizon. Just bring a bit of that into it. Really gives that evening effect. Might just move that over there. Kind of running out of space here. I'll just move some of those tones over there. Move some of these ones. Just mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue and white, make it a pretty light tone. Just going to introduce a little bit of that blue into there as well as it recedes off with particles in the atmosphere and all that stuff. Lovely magentas. Okay, straight away you can see all the colour starting to form now, that evening evening light. Get some of those warmer tones, I guess, so we'll be going for I'll start off with not crazy crazy strong colours. I'll go for the more tertiary version, so I've got yellow ochre and lizard and crimson and stuff, so it's not the strongest colour I could create. I'll just drag it across a bit here and there. It's more of a tertiary colour, saving all the strongest accents for exactly that, for accenting. Just 
pull a bit here and there where you feel you need it. Just feeling it as I go. Very lightly touching. Letting a lot, a lot of stuff shine through. It's all about feel here. Feeling what should be right. Alright. Just going to lighten a little bit with some of these oranges. That one went a bit dark because see I pulled accidentally pulled too hard and got some of the blue from underneath so what I'll do is I'll scrape back clean that a bit. Clean all those tones then get nice yellow ochre, some of those warm oranges, a bit more red in the mix maybe with that orange. Very lightly touched, so I'm hardly touching because that blue underneath is very wet. And that's the beauty of the palette knife, you can drag along like that just, just touching it and it doesn't smudge the underlayer too much. So I'm just grabbing for highlights here a little. Alright now, I suppose I should get stuck into that major tree there. All the yellows and cads and the brightest colours you can possibly imagine. with some of those crazy blues, magentas, maybe even a bit of Viridian Green, so I'm half mixing a lot of cool colours there. Trying to give the feeling of this side of the trunk. There'd be a lot of cooler tones coming in. Trying to make that a fairly major sized trunk, let's have a look. Wipe it clean, pull that across a bit, so I'm getting good shape. Mix up all these colours again, half mix them to get plenty of power. Stick a few in. Before I go too much further, what I'll do is, just feeling a little bit of that bright stuff. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I've got the shadow tones of the foliage, but I haven't got the light tone, so I'll whip up some of that. I might make a, just using the big knife so far, I might get stuck into a little one. So that's Viridian Green and White, a really high key colour. The white with the Viridian Green makes a really stinging coloured light tone green. I'll just have that sitting over there. If I half mix that with the yellow ochres will get a really powerful colour. Then if I half put some of these reds in there, oranges and reds, get a really strong, powerful sunset foliage colour. Just very lightly touching here. Just 
feeling where I want to have the major things happening. Pull through. That's nice. Keep it a bit warm with a little bit more of the oranges in it. It really stings and pops with the power of the afternoon light. Do more of the greens, burns the ender even to tear it down a bit. Some of this stuff on the edge here. Just kind of pulling through to soften them. A little bit of light here and there, touching things. Just lightly touching so the The under shadow is still showing through, but not too much. All right, it's time to stand back and analyze what's going on. bad. Now what I'll do is, with a clean knife again, you've seen me use this technique before, where I just pull through to help pull some of these background. It just marries the foliage of the tree and the sky together so they're not staring at each other too much. So with a clean knife each time you just pull through. Like that needs to be softened there, for example. A bit of softening here won't hurt. You still leave hard patches. It's all about soft and hard and lost and found, as you know. Just soften some of that. Really got to go by feel and try not to overdo anything just yet, because the beauty of a painting like this is not having it overdone. So you constantly work around to make sure, whoops, you constantly just work around and don't get too obsessed with one particular piece at a time. If you say, right, I don't like, I don't like the way that sky is blending, I'm just going to get that perfect first, well, that's not the way to think, because then what happens is if you just leave it, even if you don't like a certain bit, and get, bit, get into other bits that need more work. Later on when you look, you go, hang on, that other part of that sky I thought was no good is actually all right. I can leave it now. So it works a bit like that. Go for the biggest differences and don't get too obsessed if one little patch is not working out how you like it. Let's go for some of these magentas again with the white. I just grabbed a bit from off the side there that I used earlier in the sky, but this is a bit darker, so it's got a bit more magenta in it. That evening light, let's have a look. That's good, but okay. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to a slightly smaller knife. What I'll do is I'll clean all that because that's got a bit of the green foliage from the sky. I want to keep that away from the what I'm doing now. I want to keep everything very clean and orange and yellow and red. With no green. So here we go. Mix up a bit of yellow and red to make a nice orange. Just a tiny bit of white. 
a bit more white to lighten the tone. Just going to half mix it with the uh, magenta I made, just uh, just kind of when I do that, have a patch of magenta here and have a patch of something else there, you pull them together and half mix them, you get this kind of beautiful blend. Is it purple? Is it orange? It gives you that kind of effect, which is what you want. A bit of both, because it is kind of purpley bits and orange bits on the hills over here, so. Just trying to paint where the light's striking those hills. Nice bits of light and shadow. Let me have a look at that colour. What am I doing? Yeah, it's giving the feeling of evening light. That's that nice slanted light look. Bits in here and bits in there, wherever it happens to be needed. Okay, get back. Like I said, I don't want to overdo anything just yet. I want it to be understatement rather than overstatement. Let's go for some cooler greens and blues. The lizard and crimsons and the blues. A really cool tone in here. For a few more of those darks, really dark in this area up here near the gum, where you do the gum trees. Give me something to work with, a few darks. Pull some in, let's have a look at that. What have I got? Alright, and we go for the bigger knife. Yellow ochres. A few of the cad colours to get a nice bright effect. yellow ochre. The cad red's a very strong colour you see. Let's half pull through here and there and feel your way as you go. Feel those magentas. Alright, guess what time it is? Time, unfortunately, to use a slightly smaller knife. You know I like using the big knife. Alright, white, pretty much all white, just a tiny bit of yellow to highlight a bit. Just want to build up a really good... What have we got here? A bit more white. Trying to build up a real accent there where there's a lot of light shining. Using a knife kind of going sideways mark like so. Half mixing colours. A little bit more here, a little bit more there. And with a knife on the edge here for a bit of redder highlights. Where the sun's really popping in the evening light. 
half mix those colours, put them in with spontaneity. Spontaneity is always a good thing. You tend to have spontaneity when you're working on site because you have to work fast. It's good to try and repeat it when you're in here. Give yourself a time limit like I've said before. Don't give yourself all day to paint. Act as if maybe there's a uh, sun that's about to disappear and you just haven't got time to think, just quickly get it in. But at the same time you're still trying to be accurate, you're not thinking oh, I'll get it in and be sloppy. You're trying to be accurate but because you're trying to be, because you're working fast you get this kind of spontaneous look. Just get the edge of the knife. Pull in a bit so I can refine what I'm doing here with draftsmanship of the tree. And when I mean draftsmanship of the tree, I just mean the drawing of the tree, the shape of the tree. Cool tones there. Starting to get there, really starting to get an effect of evening light, which I'm pretty happy with because that was the idea. It's just mixing up some nice oranges again. Just popping them against the against the cold blues, and of course they really pop when they're next to cold blues because it's a complementary colour. So you can get some real accents and strength, really giving the feeling of that evening light. But you use it sparingly. You've got to know where you want to use the biggest accents. All right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the tape off because I'm getting to that stage that I feel like I no longer want the tape on. Because I've got other things to do now and the tape's just getting in the way. Okay, so I'll put that in the bin and I'll stand back and analyse it. always looks completely different once you take that tape off because it's got rid of the messy edges, so it's best to just get back and have a look and see what you've got. All right, so we're just in the finishing phases here. We've got the block in and now the sun's just starting to come up over the hill and lick the colour, so here we go. An orange. Where you reckon it should be? Well, I'm actually not minding what's happening there. I'm quite pleased. Clean knife, clean knife. Yeah, I'll leave that for now. I won't get carried away there now. Peel these magentas. white, mixing up a real intense thing there. Alright, here with this other knife, let's have a look. I'll mix up some more of these yellows and reds. A little bit of white in her. Half mix them, now let's see what we've got here. Okay. Trying to feel what I want here. Let's have a look. Just pulling the road out of the subject. That was the idea of taping the bottom. It is very much feelish, you don't want to get too carried away either and uh, just want to get it. Just want to get the feeling of what you're trying to do, but not too much. All 
Right, let's have a look at that. It's really working. It's highlights here. It's uh, really abstracted, but at the same time, it's very realistic too because when you've got that slanted sunlight and the sun's on that intense angle, particularly in the outback when there's a bit of a drought and there's all these warm earthy tones, a combination of light and shadow on those fantastic warm and cool colours, hot and cold and whatever, it's very much like that. All right, I'll stand back and have another look. Gotta work out where I want my energy to be, you know what I'm saying? Just adding refining details, not too much. What you're doing is trying to give the feeling of that evening light dancing across the subject, lighting a few things up. At the same time, you don't want to get too carried away because I feel like I've already got something, you know. It's a nice sting of red, that pinging it. Let's have a look at that. Good, now I'll get a little bit of white and yellow. Work with that orange, that's kind of a combination of all of them. A little bit more white. Okay, what have we got? Needs to be a lot more standing back now when you really has to be a lot more standing back and, and looking rather than overdoing because this is very understated and that's part of the beauty of the painting. That was the idea of the concept, it was a painting, like I said it was about enlarging a little frantic on location plein air sundown study, bringing it up onto a larger scale but still not using photo reference, just trying to get what you had there and enlarge it and maybe simplify it and even add to it. And so what I've done there is I could see that there was some beautiful play of light and shadow in the original one. And I could also see that that road could potentially, as I've done, be better if I played the picture up a bit and dropped, it, dropped the road out of the picture. And I think I'm pretty happy with that idea. I've left tons of raw linen throughout the painting and I'll get the camera off soon, you can have a look. And that raw linen really adds to the freshness and the spontaneity and the understatement of the painting. In saying that, I'm pretty happy, so what I'll do is, I won't go any further, because that's definitely how you wreck them. There's something nice about the under, under finished of the painting, the freshness. You can see the bones of the work, you can see how it was constructed. Okay, so what we'll do is, we'll get that camera off and have a close look. Alright, now, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you know I'm putting up these videos. Thumbs up if you like the video, spread it around as much as you can, get the channel growing, get the word out there. Let's have fun painting. All right, let's get this camera off and have a look. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you later.